and the weather in Indonesia continues to worsen. A cyclone of unprecedented intensity today devastated villages along the coast. At least 800 are reported to be missing or dead. It comes just three days after the monsoon in Laos caused 12 villages to disappear in flooding. And now the local weather forecast for the next five days. Tide levels of up to 2.5 meters above normal are expected, so several towns along the coasts are put on a heightened state of alert. mennesker i Asien i disse dage holder vejret og håber på, at vejret ikke tager deres hjem. Har en række forskere herhjemme erkendt, at klimaændringerne bliver voldsommere og voldsommere i form af regn og storm, og det bliver værre og værre for hvert år, der går. Og så her i USA er det højsæson for orkaner. Folk her på Østkysten er begyndt at søge i sikkerhed i højere liggende områder, og Nationalgarden er sat ind. Når jeg vender tilbage i næste udsendelse, bliver det med chefen for kystzoneplanlægningen, Marie Helledi, der vil forklare, hvad vi kan forvente, og hvad hendes folk i overvis har gjort for at værne om folk herude. Take a trip on a gondola between Manhattan skyscrapers, or a scuba diving holiday in the submerged city of Venice. How does the old saying go? Those that forget the lessons of history are doomed to repeat them. Today, we all know that Grandfather's treatise on the consequences of the climate didn't get the attention it deserved. And it's cold comfort to know that right now the weather is backing up my arguments when I have to try to give the politicians a wake-up call by satellite. It's probably because warmth, wind and rain can bring so much happiness and so many tears that in several generations of my family it has been a sort of calling to try and make the weather into an ally and not an enemy. And every single one of those several hundred thousand people hit by the typhoon in East Asia must have felt an even greater loss than Dad did. Um, 16 years ago, during the autumn storm. Out in the Far East, they've lost everything. Here it was, after all, only the fine old summer cottage at that time. Oh yeah, and of course all the savings that people in the area had invested in the new dike. Almost 200 meters of the dike disappeared in an autumn storm. And the experts had already warned that the dike wasn't strong enough to withstand this new type of storm. However, suddenly it wasn't enough just to secure the houses against the sea. The stream that ran through the area had also become a problem as the amount of rainfall increased. This often resulted in flooding following a cloudburst, which made the harmless beck resemble a major river. Just like my father, many families began to wonder whether they could afford to continue to protect their houses against flooding. When compensation was offered in exchange for abandoning the summer cottages, my father took this option. And a whole area full of summer cottages disappeared when people decided to retreat from the raging elements. This marked the end of a development in which for many years a lot of people had lost the desire to spend time at their summer cottage. It was completely different to developments in the 2020s, when I was a child. At that time, there was great concern that all the beauty contained in our environment would disappear if adequate protection was not put in place. At that time, the fight for the sea view went on the offensive. Water became land, and harbour basins were filled up and heavily protected against the sea. Higher and stronger dikes were built, so-called super dikes, which were designed to protect the many new houses against the sea. But at the same time, these super dikes also spoiled the view of the sea. Apart from the handful of billionaire dwellings, built right on the top of the huge embankments, where even the most violent storm could never force the waves up anywhere near the top of the super dike. So it was actually quite easy to understand why Grandfather sold his apartment when the new dike reached the height of a five-storey building and blocked his view of the sea. But by moving, he ended up sealing his own fate. 
He may not have reverted to his childhood following this experience, but he moved back to the small village of his birth, further into the fjord. People have lived here for generations, and many family-owned businesses have been passed down from father to son. In order to protect the old town, which was worthy of preservation against the increasingly frequent storms, both fixed and mobile seawalls had been built. Despite these measures, the seawalls were overtopped by large waves, such that parts of the town were flooded. Grandfather tried to tell the politicians on numerous occasions that not enough was being done. But the common consensus was that it wasn't necessary to do any more. On the 17th of November last year, everything seemed in place to withstand a new storm. But the violence of this storm exceeded everyone's wildest imagination and had tragic consequences, also for Grandfather. It was not until the storm had died down that we could get an idea of the disaster that had befallen the little village. The storm had not only taken grandfather, but also 14 others. The local community was in shock. Houses in the worst hit part of the town were gradually abandoned, and several pleasant neighborhoods could have turned into a ghost town if highest priority had not been given to saving that part of the town. And it's a shame that Grandfather didn't live long enough to experience the consensus that was generated to keep the neighbourhood. For years, I have fought to create security for areas such as this on the basis of integrated planning. We have to combine all available knowledge in a creative manner and together plan a long-term and sustainable development for all coastal areas such as this and constantly balance our, i.e. man's, common interests here at the coasts against the processes of nature and the development of the climate. It has, for example, happened in this harbour town, which has been the focal point for the entire Baltic region, without new super dikes, but with a 180-year-old dike which has now been reinforced to withstand moderate wave overtopping without being seriously damaged. On the landward side of the dike, we have created a protected zone for flora and fauna, a wonderful green area which now attracts exciting plants and animals around the many small ponds that have become a useful reserve of utility water. The lowest houses are constructed on piles at a safe height to overcome flood levels that may occur when nature is unable to provide an adequate buffer during extreme storms. It was the bridge that set things moving and produced the basis of the development of the harbour, where containers from southern Europe are reloaded into the Baltic region's smaller, electrically driven vessels. People are still moving here, so new houses continue to pop up, and development is managed by planning that must at all times provide a balance with respects to assessments of the pressure from the climate and the weather, and threats on all fronts. And in this situation, almost every time things get critical, journalists call to get help, both to cast a glance at the rear-view mirror of experience and to look forward through the periscopes of our plans and forecasts. Mens vi venter på stormen, vil jeg gerne spørge dig, hvordan vi skal indrette os på de permanente ændringer i vejret, som vi må regne med. Min bedste far citerer altid Peter Sjus gamle ordsprog. Vejret vil have sin vilje, duk dig og lad det gå over. Men med de sidste årtiers voldsomme forandringer, der bliver det jo spørgsmålet, hvordan er det, vi skal dukke os? Med metrologernes mere præcise anvisninger og varslinger, der får vi jo at vide, hvem det er, der skal dukke sig, hvor længe, hvor meget og hvorhen. Og den type af varslinger, det vil have imponeret min bedste far. However, our most important admission will also be to seed coastal areas at an early stage leaving nature's processes undisturbed along with the will of the weather, without having to keep our heads down. On the contrary, we'll be able to stand tall and accept the value of studying and following nature's free reign.
Indeed, this is probably the core of my grandfather's unwavering commitment. Now, I just hope that my knowledge can be passed on to my son exactly as my grandfather's knowledge was passed on to my father, and in turn to me. We'll probably never be in a position to control the weather. Fundamentally, we can't do anything about the weather. But we can begin to adapt to it with care, because it's the balance between our interests, the development of the climate, and the processes of nature that will make up my son's future.